everybody. My name is Ashley Floyd, and I'm, I'm an engineer with the Department of the Navy. I am so, so, so excited to have one of the rock stars here. So they call me Rockstar Ashley. But guess what? I brought you Rockstar Sohom. Sohom, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Um, my name is Sohom Roy. I'm from California, and I'm a senior right now in high school. Okay, so what kind of classes are you taking right now? What, what's piqued your interest so far your senior year? So my senior year, um, this year, I really like how I was able to take an economics course for the first time. So I think the economic, like none of, I've never, I've taken a lot of math courses or science courses or English courses, but economics is something where I can kind of like get to learn a little more about what these big companies are doing with their products and see how it influences my, my life. And it's also great because as part of economics where our, our teachers have created these projects where we can learn some life skills like um, and learn more about our future careers and how that will impact our economic situation or how we can um, some more room for uh, growth as as a student or as like as I prepare to become an adult. Oh, really? OK, so so you're telling me so. OK, so you're you, you're in your math and sciences, and your English. So like what stood out most to you in economics besides just, you know, like what other companies are doing? Like what are they what are some things that they're teaching you? I think with economics, it's been pretty valuable to me because I'm able to see how when you go into a situation, there's a lot of costs and things that I wasn't considering before. So one cool thing we learned about was like economic cost versus accounting cost, where economic cost includes kind of what time you could have spent doing other things or like opportunity costs. So if I spend five hours of my day um, working for one company where I'll make a certain amount of money versus if I had spent five hours maybe studying or learning a new skill, how much money could I have made in the future? It's kind of like that where it kind of gives me more perspective on how to evaluate my decisions, not just with money making things, but also as time spent studying, like is it worth studying to get 2% more on a test or is it worth um, studying for another subject where I can increase my score by maybe 10% or stuff like that, where I feel like I'm a lot better prepared to um, approach my decisions in life and kind of think about those hidden factors that I wasn't really thinking of before. All right, so you talked about some things that are going to help you when you become an adult. So um, what do you want to do when you grow up? I, and, and I say that as in, like, I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. So it's like when you're 50, you still don't know what you want to do when you grow up. Right. So what do you want to do? I want to become a mechanical engineer. And I, I really I'm interested in kind of the R&D side of things where you're always trying to come up with something new or look at what's already out there and try to make it a little bit better. Like um, I do robotics a lot and I love how you can look at other people's robots or your own robot and kind of see what you can take from theirs to make yours better or kind of like see these little tiny places of improvement that can really push you to the next level. And I just really like that challenge of having to kind of use your learning or what you've learned from your classes and things and really apply it to something that can make, pe make people go wow or something that'll help people in their day-to-day -day lives. Wow. So have you, so uh, do you actually enter like different robotics competitions? Yeah. So I participate in first tech challenge right now. Um, so I founded my own team after uh, participating with my school in my uh, freshman and sophomore year. So starting my own team has been a really great opportunity because we've been able to build these really cool robots and spend a lot more time on the robot than we were able to at school. And it's also uh, given me this great perspective on what it really means to run a robotics team because it's not just about building the robot. We have to find sponsors. We have to sign up for competitions. We have to maintain these timelines and things like that. So it's given me a great perspective on how I'll have to kind of uh, pr act on challenges um, that are not just technical challenges, but also challenges with uh, like leadership and working with other people and things like that. Wow. Wow. OK, so definitely mechanical engineer and the robotics. Like, have you had any internships or anything related to engineering? Yeah, so one of my biggest internships has been the SEAP program. The SEAP stands for Science and uh, Science and Engineering Apprenticeship Program. So it's a program um, hosted by, I think, the Department of Naval Research or something like that. So every year uh, they have a bunch of labs that kind of coordinate with um, this program to give opportunities for high school students to pursue internships. So uh, there are all of these different labs. Some are more focused on maybe some computer programming tasks. Um, some are more focused on mechanical engineering, things like that. So this uh, CIA program gives students the opportunity to kind of find a program they like, apply to that program, and hopefully get a spot at pursuing an internship. So it's a great opportunity for students who want some work experience, um, who also want the experience of working with people across the country or working in a new location, or kind of seeing what it's like to uh, work on real-life engineering challenges that they'll see in a future career.
And I think that one of the great things about CF is that um, it's kind of more oriented to something I was doing with my extracurriculars where maybe other programs were more oriented to some of my other friends were doing um, other extracurriculars, like they weren't doing robotics, they were maybe doing like competition math or things like that. So I think that even if you feel like you're not like as competitive as your uh, fellow students because they're doing something, your own extracurriculars or your own uh, interests are unique to you. And I think the CF program was really good at identifying students who have similar interests to me or maybe interests that uh, you may not expect to be or show up in a program like this. So I think that's something that's great about the CF program. They're always looking for a diverse set of students. Um, all of the students in my program that I interacted with, they all had these different interests. They all had um, these different extracurriculars and backgrounds. And I think that's something great about the CF program where even if you don't think you're the right student for the program, there's always uh, someone who's, who's willing to take you on or willing to see the value in you. And I think that's, that's a great thing about applying to this program. So that's been a great opportunity for me because um, it's kind of meeting people uh, around the country and also because I've kind of been able to face engineering challenges that are a lot more open-ended than I think um, many summer camps or things like that would be. Um, so last year, I uh, worked with a few other students um, on a small team to figure out ways to make the office um, an office more safe with COVID-19. So we, our team was able to come out and brainstorm our own uh, solutions to our own research and things like that, and then create these proposals. So it's really cool because it wasn't like a narrow problem. It was something really uh, big. And I also love how with the C program, you're, um, you're able to kind of pick from all of these different labs. So uh, I think there are about 20 labs. I'm not 100% sure, somewhere around there. And I was able to look at each of the lab descriptions and kind of figure out what lab suited my interests most. I know some of my friends have applied to different labs and things like that, um, where they were able to kind of find something that suited their interests. So I really like how the SEAT program, um, you're not just assigned to a certain, while you are assigned to a certain task at the lab you are, you have this big opportunity to kind of figure out where you'll uh, be best at home and have a great, um, and I also like how there are all these different locations. So I applied to Philadelphia, which is pretty far from home. Um, oh, just, yeah. because I like the, just because I like the program um, there a lot, but I know some of my friends have applied to uh, programs closer to my, closer to where they live. And I like how there are labs all over the United States. So there's always opportunities, um, even if you're not comfortable going out of state. So, so what lab did you actually apply to and, and get in to do your CF internship? So I applied to the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Philadelphia. And I really appreciated um, the lead coordinator there, Tristan Wolf. He was really great at setting up the program and um, he was really outgoing and helped a lot. And I was able to contact him even after the internship had ended, I was able to contact him with help on a science fair project I was doing. So that was really cool. Um, and oh. he was able to get in touch with more people. So I really like how a lot of the mentors are really open and willing to kind of make this connection with you. That isn't just the period of the SEEP internship. They're willing to help you outside of the SEEP internship and I think it's been great. I've gotten a recommendation letter from uh, my mentor, Salvador DeSantis, so that was great. Um, and I, yeah, I really like how the SEAT program was willing to support me and uh, kind of let me do what I wanted to do within the confines of the program. Okay, so you know what, now I need to meet your parents. So you're talking about you're, you're a boss of a team, you know, you're doing all these forms, you're in robotics, you've had internships, and then you're reaching back out to your mentors. I didn't even know you could do that. Like, that's great. And look, to to reach back to your internship, to utilize them and get some help on a science fair project, you 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 won, didn't you? I know you won. Did you? Yeah, I got, I got an award. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I knew it. That's awesome. Look, look, look. I I appreciate your um your ambition and like you're such a go getter. That's amazing. Like, how did you find out about the CF program anyway? So the CF program was kind of um, it's kind of like looking on the internet for a lot of internships. So. From my school, it's like my school's pretty competitive. So everyone's applying to this internships um, during like our internship application season. Um, so there are a lot of programs in the Bay Area. And I noticed that a lot of them were more um, kind of pure research focused where you're working with like either a graduate student pursuing their PhD or um, something like that. So I realized I'm kind of more, I wanna work less pure research and more like applied engineering things. So I'm looking at these different programs available and I found SEEP on a forum um, talking about how great it was because it wasn't, it wasn't the same as all of the, many of the research programs where you're in a lab at a university working on something that you're not fully invested in. 
Um, yeah, so that was one of the things that stood out to me while I was doing research. And when I stumbled upon SEEP, I kind of knew that that was one of my like top choices for a program I wanted to apply to. Wow, wow, that is that is amazing. So, you know, a lot of times um, I hear about students like finding out because they live close to a lab or, you know, they have family members that worked, you know, they told them about it, but like you really just looked it up yourself. You were just curious and say, hey, I want to help further my education. I want to learn something. I want to do something cool with the summer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, wow. So what, what's, okay, so if you can talk about what's like one of the cool projects that you did? Because I know you said you worked with a small team and mm -hmm. they were COVID related. What was one of the projects you got to work on? So one of the projects um, I got to learn on was kind of this COVID prevention thing. So one cool thing we did was um, we were talking to our lab mentors and they have a lot of lab equipment that people are constantly touching like tools and things. Um, they're also talking about how they have these 3D printers and multiple people are interacting with the 3D printers, touching the buttons, turning them on. So uh, one of the things we came up with was this like, it was kind of a box um, with the turntable inside of it. And we were looking into like UV light to um, kill uh, the coronavirus. We were looking into disinfection methods with like alcohol um, or things like that, like rubbing alcohol or disinfectants and things like that. So we, we were able to come up with this model of a box that had this turntable thing to hold different tools in it. And then um, it would spin around overnight. So at the end of the day or throughout the day, um, people working in the lab could put their tools in this box and have them sterilized uh, by the next morning or however. So that was something that was pretty cool because it was kind of like some biology research we had to do. Um, we also did some engineering and yeah, that was pretty cool because we, we made a CAD model of it. So that was a fun project that I really liked working on. What would you tell to other high school students like yourself, or maybe your ninth grade self about, you know, anything dealing with engineering, anything dealing with life, the internships, like what would you get, what advice would you give them? I think one of the biggest things with internships is, or just engineering is that you kind of want to figure out what you like um, early on, just because I feel like a lot of my friends are, they've applied to a lot of majors in colleges and they're like, I did a lot of extracurriculars, but maybe I didn't have the chance to explore as much as I wanted to. So now when they have to finally make their college decision or pick their major, like finalize their major, they're having trouble with that. And I think the best advice or I took from my parents um, and from my like other adults in my life was that in ninth grade, I kind of took the opportunity to try so many different engineering clubs and just not having like, since I didn't stick to one or I was, I felt the freedom to be able to try new things um, I felt that that was a great thing for me because I, I went through software engineering, I went through electrical engineering, I did mechanical engineering, all of these different things. And I think having the freedom to, or even not engineering, like I tried clubs that were like health oriented and things like that. I think giving myself the opportunity to do that was really great because I was able to kind of hone in on what I like and do what I love. Um, I think one thing a lot of students fear is like they, they spend a year in a club and then they kind of get, get a reputation within that club or get maybe a little bit of leadership or something like that. And they say, oh, I have this. I have to do my college applications. I have to stay in this club now. I have to become president of this one club that I started in my freshman year. Um, or they may not be willing to drop things they've spent a long time on. Like one thing I spent a long time on was piano. I spent a really long time learning piano. And then I got into high school and I realized, yeah, I, have a, I want to spend more time doing robotics or I want to spend more time with these other clubs. Um, maybe that's something I need to drop. So I think that's something um, a lot, I would give advice to other high schoolers is being willing to really not, not fall for the sunk cost fallacy where if you spend so much time on something that doesn't necessarily mean it's worth continuing. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me and I really appreciate it. I hope that the students can learn a lot from you and, um, and good luck. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, see ya. See you.